saw that he did not fail to prevail against Jacob. He touched
And you know what? He was winning. Jacob was winning against Christ in their wrestling match. And I can only assume, actually, I, I know I believe this to be true. He was letting Jacob prevail so that he could touch his hip socket. And once he touched his hip socket, Christ had won the wrestling match. But here's the point. With all this conflict between ourselves, the world, our church, and with God, there is one thing that we can do about each one and then another. In every one, we can forgive ourselves, we can forgive our neighbor, we can forgive uh, our, our family in Christ, but then we cannot forgive God. So instead of being forgiving God, this is what we do, what we should do, what we better do. Pray. It's the way that God has given you to pray. And that's what Jacob did. In fact, he wanted to pray so badly that he would not let Christ go until he blessed him. Our prayer should be exactly we should, in our prayers, by the way, we should grab a hold of Christ and say, I'm not letting you go until you bless me, until you heal my child, until your will is done over my will. And you do not let go of Christ until, you, until he says, Amen, Amen. You may go in peace. That's what we do in prayer. We grab hold of Christ and say, I am. But you died for me. I will not let you go until you bless me. And what does he say when you're praying? What does he say when you pray? The liturgy is the prayer. An hour and a half long. Good thing I'll say. He blesses you. Now I'll just bless you. The altar. More specifically, he blesses you with the area of blessing. Bless you, keep you. The Lord will shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord will be countenance upon you. That's, that's the blessing that God gives to us all. And so when we see Jacob, what I hope that you do with your prayer, I want you to put this in your mind. So she could 
continues to beg. In fact, she kneels and simply says, Lord, help me. Answer. It is not right to take the pursuer of chair and throw it to the dogs. That is, those who are not in the house of Israel. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then he answered, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. She would not let go of Christ. She kept after him and after him and after him. Even when the disciples said, go away, you're getting on our nerves. Still, she continued to go after Christ. That is faith. It literally says, great is your faith. So she went after him, after him, after him. That's what Christ wants for us. To go after him and after him and after him in prayer and praise. And once we go after him and after him and after him, we realize that Christ is the one who is carrying us. He's the one that even gives us strength to pray. And so when you follow Christ, you become those who die on the cross that fall from the pastor's table. That sounds bad. What about this? Those who have gone before us, angels, archangels, all the company of heaven, they are at the great great feast with the Lamb in his kingdom, Revelation 12. And while they are all the feast of all feasts, the feast, the feast of those who are triumphant, the feast of those who have died in the faith, those people have that fall from the heavenly table and they live right here on the altar. That is the foretaste of the feast to come. The years towards the thanksgiving and for the forgiveness of sin. So I Thank mm -hmm. you.